welcome to this Civil 3D and Info Drainage round trip tutorial to show the accessibility of Info Drainage to Civil 3D users. This tutorial will be aimed at any Civil 3D user involved in drainage analysis as well as engineers looking to streamline their drainage design processes. Our workflow today will begin with an existing pipe network and catchments already inside of Civil 3D. The next step will be to export this network and surface to Info Drainage. Once inside of Info Drainage, we're going to use the Network Design Wizard to efficiently set pipe sizes and slopes, and we're going to do this based on a generated rainfall event inside of Info Drainage. Once that simulation is complete, we're going to bring all of this data back inside of Civil 3D and update the pipe network accordingly. All right, and so now that we're back inside of Civil 3D, I want to point you to the Info Drainage tab up here at the top of my screen. Once you install Info Drainage 2026, there will be a whole new Info Drainage tab up here to help you throughout this workflow. Now, as mentioned in the intro slide, what I already have in this model space is that I have a surface, I have a pipe network, and I'll go ahead and select this pipe network so you can see where it is. And I also have some catchments in here as well. These have been manually delineated, but you can also use the surface to delineate these catchments if you want to as well. So once I have this pipe network set up, I'm going to scroll up a little bit so we can see some of the profiles that I have drawn already. All of these profiles are just kind of the standard slopes, all with a 12 inch concrete pipe. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this pipe network inside of Info Drainage, and then we're going to design it um, based on a generated rainfall event inside of Info Drainage as well. So the next step is to go to the top left corner of your screen and click on export to info drainage. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask for a file path. You know, where do you want to export this project to? You're essentially going to create a new info drainage project. I'm just going to paste in a file path and I'm going to name this test and then I'll go ahead and click next. The next thing is going to ask you is, do you want to bring a surface into Info Drainage? I am going to in this case, and I'm just going to use my surface that I have in my existing Civil 3D project. So I'm going to do that and then click Next. And so now what it's going to ask me to do is some traditional part mapping. So essentially what it does is it's going to load in every single Civil 3D part family and part size that is currently inside of my pipe network. So in this case, I laid out a very simple one because I'm going to do all my analysis inside of Info Drainage. So it's just a 12 inch concrete pipe. I essentially just have to tell Info Drainage, hey, you know, this is also going to be a 12 inch pipe inside of Info Drainage. Same thing for the junction mapping. Instead of 48 inch diameter, I'm going to call this four feet. And then you only have to do this one time. And so you can see for a ex simple example like this, it's pretty easy to do manually. If you have a bunch of different parts and sizes, you can also template all of this stuff to simply just open and um, open it up in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click finish and export this to Info Drainage to create my project. So now I will just open up my file explorer to where I saved this, double click on test, and it's gonna open up Info Drainage for me. So now that Info Drainage is open, you'll see that this looks like the exact same drainage project that was inside of Civil 3D. The next thing I'm going to do is generate some flow paths. Um, I can do that automatically just from the outfall. So if I expand this out, now I can double click on one of these profiles. If we take a deeper look, you know, you can see where my cursor is. These are all, again, 12 inch pipes with that same standard slope that was set inside of Civil 3D. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to build out a rainfall event. Um, there's a whole section on rainfall managing and how to do this. I'm just going to do a very quick NOAA design storm. Um, so I'm just going to click somewhere in the middle of the U.S., generate rainfall data. Let's change this to NRCS distribution method. We're going to design this for a 50-year rainfall event. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a 50-year return period, and we're going to do a 24-hour storm, and then we're just going to use that um, standard distribution and click OK. The next thing we want to do th go through is this preliminary sizing. So if I come up here to this network design criteria, this is going to be our network design wizard criteria. So you essentially get to choose what you are designing to. So the first thing you look at are your flow options. So you say, hey, you know, I built out this 50 year rainfall event. I want to design to that. It's going to calculate the peak flow using a rational method calculation. And then if I come over to design options, this gives me even more control over the network design wizard, setting things like 
Um, you know, I want to check the velocity of my if my slopes get too steep. You can set a minimum and maximum slope, allow backdrops. What you can also do is you can specify a pipe size library. So I'm going to go ahead and open one that I have set up. And essentially what this does is it'll let you control the pipe sizes that will be used in the network design wizard. So if you have only certain sizes of pipes for certain materials, let's say, you can come in here and set that library up pretty easily. So go ahead and click OK. I don't really want manhole sizing this time, so I'm going to click OK again. This time I'm going to click on the network design wizard, and then this is kind of all the input data for this one flow path. Um, click Next. Click next again. This is going to be that criteria. Since I'm um, not excluding the branch lines, it will also take into account the upstream flow of those other branch lines as well. So I'll click next. Everything in yellow is things that have changed and everything in white is things that have stayed the same. So I'll go ahead and click finish one more time. Here's the results of that steady state rational method calculation. I'll close this out. Double click on that same flow path, that same profile. And now if I zoom in, you can see where my cursor is. These have changed to you know 18 inch pipes, 15 inch pipes. And it looks like the pipe slopes have changed a bit as well as the pipes got a little bit deeper based on the minimum cover depth I specified in the network design wizard. All right, so now I wanna bring this back into Civil 3D. How do I do that? First of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and click save. Open up my Civil 3D project once more. This time I'm just going to click on import from info drainage. Select the file where I have this saved. Click open next again. Now it's going to say, do I want to load a surface in? I don't. I'm just going to use that existing civil 3D surface that's already in there. Click next. Now it's going to load in all of the unique pipes that were created in info drainage. So this time you see info drainage connection type part family. All you have to do is specify, hey, in Civil 3D, this is what that is. Um, a lot of these are already done by default for you. Same thing for the junctions. And again, everything when it comes to part mapping, it can be, can be templated. You can always come up here and save this so you don't have to set it up every single time, especially for larger projects. So I'll go ahead and click Finish. And now it's going to load in all of that data from Info Drainage, and it's going to update my pipe network. All right, so now that this is loaded back in, what I can do to quickly show that it's loaded in is we can go look at those profiles. So now if I zoom in, you can see, hey, this downstream pipe's changed to 18. The slopes have slightly changed as well. And you can see, even though I ran the network design wizard just on that one flow path, since these were some of the branch lines, it's also taken into account these as well. And so some of these have been upsized and changed too. And so that concludes a quick round tripping of Civil 3D to Info Drainage and back again. Please check out some of the other videos if you want some more information about you know, the rainfall events, the network design wizard. There's a whole section on YouTube about all of these different kinds of things you can do with Info Drainage.